Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at the Combo Touch from Logitech. This is a keyboard and trackpad combo for the 10.2 inch 7th generation iPad and you get a backlit keyboard along with a trackpad because Apple has recently added mouse support to the iPad operating system and now you can do things like select apps with a mouse as opposed to touching the screen. You get a lot more computer-like functionality with this and all of the gestures that are supported on Apple's official trackpad also work on this one. And we're going to be exploring what you can do with this case in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this keyboard case is all about. Now, the price point on this is $149. That gets you the keyboard along with the case that it comes with here. And you can see what it looks like when it's all folded up. Now, the package here will add 1.7 pounds or about 650 grams to the weight of your iPad. So it definitely feels heavier and bulkier, certainly thicker with all this stuff attached to it, but it isn't that hard to get the iPad out of it when you need to, so I'm not gonna ding them too much on that. Uh, most keyboard cases do add some weight, but you also get some protection added as a result of that, and it's a nice hard rubber here that surrounds the iPad. You've got a little bit of screen protection here as well because the uh, lip of that case extends beyond the display, so overall it feels like it's pretty rugged and should provide some decent protection. Now I found it was a little bit difficult to use as a laptop. So let me wheel my chair back here a little bit and you can see what I'm talking about. Um, so I've got it on my lap here. Everything is stable, no problems there. But as you can see, the end of the kickstand here is right at the end of my knees. And I'm kind of looking down over the display. It's not the most comfortable viewing angle for me. A better viewing angle might be for me to sit like this. But if I'm on a train or a plane or something, I may, I may not have that luxury to be able to lean back that far to get the more comfortable viewing angle. Now I could of course move the uh, kickstand down a bit, but if I move it past this point now, it's past the end of my knees and things might flop over <laughs> as I'm typing on it. So it's not the most ideal laptop scenario, primarily because there's so much distance here between uh, the end of the keyboard and the end of the kickstand. And this is an issue I have with the Microsoft Surface sometimes when I'm in a cramped space as well. So it's a similar problem because this is a similar design. And due to the width of the screen, the kickstand is just that long and that's part of the issue. So it's not a very good laptop surface, uh, but it is of course working quite well on a desk. Uh, the keyboard does not work wirelessly. It does need to be attached to the iPad. It connects to the proprietary Apple connector here on the bottom of the seventh generation iPad only. Uh, that's the one with the 10.2 inch screen. The good news is, is that this is the entry level iPad at the time I'm recording this video. So you can add a lot of functionality, basically computer-like functionality uh, to the entry level iPad uh, with this kit here. At the top, you've got a pen holder, which will hold the Apple Pencil. And I also tried out the Logitech Crayon in here, which is an alternative pencil. That seems to fit pretty well, too. I don't think other third-party pencils will fit if they're too thin for this, but most styluses that are around this width or close to the width of the original Apple Pencil should fit in pretty nicely. Uh, it's all fabric. It actually feels really nice. It's got a good grip on it as a result. So it's a high-quality feeling product. And I was pleased with the keyboard as well. It's very comfortable to type on. You've got pretty large keys here that are well spaced and there's a good amount of key travel to it as well. Uh, so as you're typing, the, you can really get a good amount of tactile feel to it. So I was very pleased with that. Uh, the keyboard is backlit so you can see it in the dark, which is nice. It draws its power from the iPad. It shouldn't drain the battery too much. The trackpad feels great. Uh, it's a nice size here for the uh, device and it's got a nice confident click to it. Uh, you can't click it up on the top here, but most of the surface here is clickable. Um, so it really does feel pretty nice and as good as many laptops I've looked at that are around this size. So altogether a very high quality feeling product here, good backlighting on the keys. And I find it to be a very nice uh, accessory for this iPad. Now, if you haven't yet seen how the trackpad works with the iPad, I'll do a quick demo here for you. Uh, so right now we've got the trackpad attached. You can see the mouse here is a little circle versus an arrow like you might have on your computer. And if I bring it up to the notes app here, you can see that it kind of latches onto that icon and sticks there for a little bit. 
Uh, so you can be a little less precise perhaps with the iPad versus your laptop. And I can just click on it here to pull up the Notes app, for example. I can use two fingers to scroll up and down just like I could on my computer. And then take a look at the mouse pointer here. So right now it's a line. Uh, if I bring it up to the top of the screen, it becomes a circle again. And it will lock on to these icons, kind of like how it does on the home screen there. So it's a little easier to use, I think, than a computer. And if you often have a hard time navigating with trackpads on a computer, this might be a little easier for you because, again, it will kind of give you some leeway. I can select text by clicking down the trackpad button here and just moving my index finger up and down. That works just fine. I can hold three fingers and swipe up like this to get the application chooser. I can jump over to the Photos app here and zoom in with a two-finger pinch. So a lot of the things that you're used to doing on screen uh, will work here on the trackpad, and it's very responsive. It feels every bit as good as the trackpad that I looked at from Apple a few weeks ago that was much more expensive. I can swipe three fingers up from the bottom there and go back to the home screen. And there's a bunch of other gestures as well that you can find on Apple's website to get some additional ideas. And over time, we'll see more of these gestures integrated into different iPad apps. Most of the Apple apps now work with the trackpad quite nicely. Other apps may not work as well. Uh, so in an app that doesn't officially support the trackpad, it will kind of emulate what a touch on the screen would do. So by and large, you shouldn't find anything that doesn't work with the trackpad, but some things will just work better than others. So overall, this is a nice device from Logitech. It adds a little bulk and weight to the overall package, but it does provide, I think, some good value because you can take your entry-level iPad and essentially turn it into a little computer that is very functional, surprisingly so, uh, with the addition of the trackpad and the integrated keyboard here. Now this one will only work with the seventh generation 10.2 inch iPad. It doesn't work with any other iPad in the lineup, but most iPads work with keyboards and trackpads. So my daughters have the prior generation iPad that this keyboard won't work with, but I did attach some keyboard trackpad combos like this one and got pretty basic computer functionality added to something we already had. And that, of course, prevented us from having to buy additional laptops for the kids while they were stuck at home e-learning. So there was a good uh, value add here from Apple just by putting that mouse functionality into place. And here, of course, you can add it to uh, the seventh generation iPad and get a very nice integration here. I like the backlit keyboard. I wish it worked a little bit better on the lap. And my only other gripe is that I would really like the keyboard to fold behind the iPad so that I could very quickly pick up the device, do something on the screen, and then put it back into typing mode. As you can see here, I can keep the two things together, but the keyboard detaches. It won't fold around to the back. And some of the other keyboards that you might find on the iPad, which don't have trackpads, uh, usually let you fold the keyboard around to the back so you can do what you need to do on screen and then fold it back into keyboard mode and start typing again. I just like having everything integrated and then having things detach on me that might get lost, especially if we're talking about kids, is not as attractive. And this is not just Logitech doing this. Apple's own uh, new keyboard with the trackpad also has this issue. Um, but it would be nice if that uh, keyboard could stay attached, fold around to the back, and then very quickly come back into position for going back into typing mode. But that's a small gripe. Overall, a nice product here. And if you're looking to add a little value to your entry-level 7th generation iPad, here you go. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Tom Albrecht, Chris Allegretta, David Hockman, Brian Parker, Mike Patterson, and Bill Pomerantz. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more.
And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.